All right, and all right, and we are back with uh, day twelve, talking about the two thousand eighteen album from the duo They Hate Change called Now and Never Again. Now, uh, this record, I th I mostly got to thinking about this record from the label Death Bomb Arc, which is responsible for uh, promoting and pushing artists like uh, JPEG Mafia and uh, Clipping and uh, Lana Del Rabies. And uh, yeah, I was just like, you know, it, this is an interesting sort of thing. I heard, uh, what was their latest thing? Juice, I believe? Or, no wait, was it Juice? I'm not sure. It was their latest EP, though. And I remember enjoying that a fair bit, so I was like, hey, let me listen to a full length of theirs, which honestly isn't that much longer than an EP. And in fact, this record doesn't really seem to have... It mostly just seems like an EP just with interludes, in a sense. But then again, I feel like that adds to the uh, aesthetic of this record, because for some reason the vision that I got while listening to this was like trying to watch like illegal cable in like the 90s like very staticky very also very intimate and very uh like i feel like i shouldn't be listening to this in a sense because i don't know it just feels very personal especially with like the discussions of what can i what i can only assume are like different like plugins or I'm not sure, like, synthesizers at the end of the first track opposite side of A Bad Day, and they keep talking about, like, the 909 and which they prefer and stuff like that because they, I, I think they're plugins and stuff. And that really comes down to, like, this really feels super personal. Like, I'm legit listening to someone from, like, high school who just made a mixtape, but they also... But, like, also, they were really good at making mixtapes. Not to say, like, oh, yeah, someone from someone from my uh, sociology class could make it. No, I genuinely think this is a really great record. And with a name like They Hate Change, you would think this record would be very... Pol I mean, with, with a band name like They Hate Change, you would think that the group would be very political. And, I mean, they do... Uh, you know, they're, they they are conscious in a sense, but I feel like that's more of a subtextual thing instead of the actual text of this record, because, I, I don't know, it just feels like it's not, it's something that just impacts what is being said instead of what is actually being said. Like, like a lot of what is being discussed wouldn't happen without the political implications that are only occasionally brought into the text. But, um, yeah, like, it's a very short listen, only about, uh, what about, 23, 25 minutes? And it's just 11 tracks, which, uh, three of them are labeled as interludes. So, yeah, it's a very short record. Another thing that I kept coming up with was the... I... It very much felt like a, I don't know, like an Earl Sweatshirt project somehow. I'm, like, it just seemed like a lot of, like, loops that were put into, like, this very lo-fi bedroom sort of feel. But also, again, they felt very personal, very ambient in a sense, but also weren't afraid to get noisy and experimental when they had the chance as well. Uh, yeah. And I think that's it. I would really love to hear some Earl Sweatshirt over some They Hate Change production, because I think that would be a really interesting fit. But, uh, yeah. I don't really have much else to say about this project, other than I think it was pretty good. I would love for you guys to check it out, and let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Discussion is always welcome. If you want to follow me on this crazy journey of listening to an album a day, you can like and subscribe. But other than that, this has been Pardon the Memes, and I will see you tomorrow.